There we go. Sorry. No, no, it's totally fine. I have a stack of words. These are instructions. And each of these instructions is going to be our next layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something that's going to be challenging for uh, probably for both of you, honestly, less for Leslie, more for, for you. But we're going to work on one piece of paper for quite a while. And each layer is going to be one of these words. So these words are going to dictate to us, not us ourselves. Um, there are things like dots. You're going to add dots. Uh, cover it up, meaning completely cover it in a wash of color. Uh, blend, which is, you know, we talked a little bit about, um, especially with color wash paintings that you're blending them. So there's each of these strips of paper is a different kind of instruction for us. Um, so um, my thought was, you know, we'll work on one painting until we all feel like it's just a little too full. Um, so what I'm going to have us do is after each layer, I'm going to give us, you know, five minutes or so per layer. And then I'm going to have us share our pictures of our, the development of our paintings. And then we're going to talk about why we're making the decisions that we're making. Because better decisions will make better paintings. So we can have conversations as big. Maybe if you had done this part here, it would be more successful to you or less successful. Does that sound good to everyone? Are you guys ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Um, I have mine, I realize I have mine taped down and I wouldn't take yours down. Um, some of the instructions have us rotating our, our pieces of paper. So uh, you'll probably not wanna tape it down like I did just because I have. Are you going to tell us like which medium we should use as well as the word you need to make your choices. That's another that's one of the parts where you start to make choices for yourself, but you're going to know what mediums work best for certain layers right which of your mediums is going to work best for blending probably either oil pastels if you really want to smear it in or watercolors you probably don't want to do oil pastels too early because they're going to be repellent of any kind of paint or watercolor so you know, this is where we start to really, sorry about the flashing TV in the background. Hopefully it's not too distracting. Okay. Um, no, it's fine. I just noticed that it changed a picture <laughs> and it's kind of visible. Okay, so you guys ready? Here we go. Mm -hmm. We're, oh, some of these are so good. I forgot how good some of these are. <laughs> oh, it gets connected. It is five minutes after we're, we're jumping the gun a little bit. And I'll probably, um, refold them all and put them back in the the pot for the next go round um this is a really fun way to to challenge yourself i used to know an artist who did all of her sketchbooking was this kind of process um so sorry hey nina did you hear that uh i know you just popped in chris is gonna uh, okay no go ahead eat out a word or a phrase um and then you all are gonna, they can use any medium, right? Do anything, any medium. That's the choice that they're making, which is good. Hold right, on. you're gonna make layers, a layer based on that word. And then she's gonna read another word or concept and you're gonna put another layer based on that word on top. <laughs> ah, okay. Challenging. Choose whatever but, you want. Yeah. We're just we're just working on experimenting and developing decision making. So here we go. Our first layer is splatter. So obviously, we're <laughs> gonna use a water-based medium and we're gonna do some splattering. This is it's a do really it. splatter. Love it. Splatter. Well, and I gotta think about you know splatter on your first layer. What kind? Of, you know, what do you want to do? How do you want to do it? How much water are we going to add to make it happen? Just a couple of splatter notes for you all. I find that splattering is a little easier uh, if you're if you're holding the handle of another brush out and splattering like this. You can control it better. Be aware you're going to get yourself dirty. <laughs> I also use water liberally. I feel like I'm in a, on a sunny day in a dark bubble of gray. It is Astoria.
Yeah, see if I get it everywhere, because that will, would be my luck. I think I need to protect my computer. <laughs> you have to be kind of a little like, uh, you can sometimes you'll see me be kind of delicate with it. <laughs> my phone gets it all the time. A little bit of time to let our layers and don't be afraid to use multiple colors if you if you really feel that you want your first splatter layer to be great. It's a little a little wetter in Astoria, so my stuff's not likely to dry as fast. Aha. Fuckers are the worst. I really thought that I could be a grown up without a without a apron today, and I'm finding out that that is a lie. It's not. It's not a fact. <laughs> Nothing well, is. Where's the fun in that? I know. <laughs> I feel a little bit like I need help getting dressed. That's fine. I'm on it. Look at me. I almost got my apron totally tied in. Whew. Temperature is a hard balance in the studio right now. Okay, how is everybody's first splatter layers going? It's pretty good. It's all over everything. <laughs> I can't find my phone. <laughs> there it is. Does your phone look like a Jackson Pollock painting now? My desk does. My computer does. <laughs> <laughs> Good artist. Good artist. Going outside <laughs> the lines. <laughs> you know how to make a mess, right? Mm -hmm. Well, so, he, you know, when I talk about the, you know, the importance of this class today is going to be about how we make good decisions. Um, as that makes abstract painting so much easier, right? So I started with a teal, an aqua teal color, mainly because I know that all of my materials will look good with it. It's a color that's like a pretty standard color in my own art practice. So I chose to use, to make my first color, um, something that would be easy to build off of. So that's where we talk about how we make our decisions and how they affect the future of our painting is, is that I knew that this first layer is probably gonna get covered up a lot. It's not gonna be a defining moment in everything we do, but it is um, important that I create a good base for the future of my painting. Sorry, I'm clearly just uncomfortable in everything today. <laughs> <Fine. laughs> okay, are we ready for our next layer? Let's do it. Yep. Let's see yeah. what wildness we get this time. Okay, so this one is pattern. 
So the intention with this layer is that you add marks on your page that are in a particular pattern, whether that's like circles, you know, in a four by four square, whether that's hash marks, whether that's plaid or, you know, like anything that's repetitive. So you're going to want to be thinking about the fact that you'll probably be covering up some of this. And again, the color use and the material use become your decision, the part that's yours to make. It's all about your expression. Um, I do tend to just out of ease and, and such, I tend to use water soluble color pencils, right? They're easier to draw with too. Um, <laughs> Leslie, what are you using? I use some coffee grounds mixed in water, yep. some, a a flip chart, a flip chart pen that I soaked on a wet tissue <laughs> and I melted a crayon. Brilliant. That's my girl right there. She's That's a person brilliant. after heart. <laughs> oh my God. We're going to have a whole series called office art. What art can you make with things in the office? <laughs> I was telling somebody one of my favorite sneaky tricks, like if you're taking like a watercolor pan and like a sketchbook with you is if you get a beverage and you get a piece of ice, you can put it in your watercolor pan and it becomes your little pot of water and it's a little more. That's controlled. right. Yeah. If you don't have a cup or if you don't have, you know. Oh yeah. Oh, thank you. Random tips and tricks from the roadside artist. I did see something very interesting recently, which is one of one of my kind of current art crushes, you might call her, um, uses a drawing board, very similar to the one that I use, except for she's cut out at the top, along the top of her drawing board, little view holes so that she could, she doesn't have to, to bring a viewfinder with her. It's just part of her drawing board. And I, I think that's pretty damn brilliant. That's kind of cool. That's very cool. Right. And she's got it in several sizes. So it, you know, whatever is most appropriate, it's the one that works. Pretty rock star. She's also like a color genius. She does all kinds of crazy work based off of color theory. Okay, you all just let me know when you're done with this layer. Um, obviously in between some of these layers, we could probably tinker around with them forever. Um, we don't have to move quickly. We have plenty of time, but you guys let me know. I'm done. Almost there. You can go ahead. We don't have to, I, I'm, I'm just, Filling in some of my little scalloped edges here. 
you know? So give you just a little bit longer and then we'll move on to the yep. next layer. Okay. Mm -hmm. You good? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, there's no hurrying. We have two hours. Okay. Our next layer is contour. If you remember in one of my first classes, I taught you one of the things I taught you was blind contour warm ups. So you're going to do a blind contour drawing. So you're going to hold your pen or pencil, whatever choice you make. And you're going to draw something in the room without looking down at the page and without lifting up your pencil. Have you done this before, Jeannie? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, we did it. We so, did it way time ago, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're going to so we're going to do that. This is, you know, this is where we start to make decisions about where on the paper, what part we're going to cover up with these these contours. Um, if we're going to be adding to them later and things like that, so be be aware a little bit as you think about things. Um, and uh, we'll check back in a little bit. That is clearly not going to work for me today. It's just being a charge. My blind contour is supposed to look like a tube of paint and really it's just a big smattering mess, but that's fine, whatever. We're gonna make it through. <laughs> Oh, you can once you've done the main part of the drawing, you can look at it and yep. fill things in. after you finish your con and then you're going to make some decisions about it. Like I um, use yeah. a water soluble graphite, so now I'm choosing the decision I'm making about it is that I'm choosing to muck it up with my water because it doesn't really look like a tube of paint. It just looks like a big spot, which is fine. It'll come in interesting, I'm sure. And I didn't do it any better the second time I tried to do it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but that's all right. It's consistent. Well, consistently terrible. <laughs> and honestly, you know, this is where, this is where, you know, I am, I am learning the longer I do this, that there really is very few things that cannot be totally fixed, you know? I love how your consistently terrible stuff looks really great. <laughs> I love that yeah. blue. Yeah. It's a good yeah. blue. Kind of hoping to dry a little faster. I need to get myself a little mini fan or something, right? <laughs> I 
I did the little scallops like mermaid scales because you know Ooh, I love that. that. Uh, that is like a very popular costume for Halloween here, mermaids and such. Because we're at well, the sea. Have, have you ever been to the the mermaid fair at Coney Island? I have never been to Coney the Island. Parade, they do. It's an annual event. They do a mermaid parade. That's you. That sounds incredible. It's very cool. Just, just like Google it. Just do Coney Island Mermaid Parade. Wow. It's, it's just people being totally weird. It's fantastic. <laughs> the whole like mermaid tail thing where they're in like pools acting like mermaids. That's weird to me. But I also realized that for some people, they're like living lifelong fantasies. Like yeah. you start yeah. as a kid, you obsess. Great. You know. It's either fairies or mermaids, right? The land dwellers or the sea dwellers. The fairy festival uh, where I where I grew up in Eugene. That's a fairy world. It's a big deal, you know. Love it. You know, the in same Olympia, thing. in Olympia, Washington, they have a parade every year called um, uh, something like um, Parade of the Species. It's like a science parade it's it, is it is it called parade of the species or like origin of the species something like that it's fantastic it's actually and you see a lot of fairies and things even though it's really about science <laughs> so, it never amazes me the things that we get interested in right and that yeah and uh, how much of it is rooted in our childhood fantasy <laughs> well, in Eugene, their big beauty pageant of the year is called the Slug Queen Festival. Ah, I love it. Oh yeah. And you don't, it's not about beauty. It's like community impact. And then you have this like slug queen character. And, you know, in order to win, you really got to bring it. You got to have a character. That character has to have a purpose. I cannot remember the name of the slug queen this year. Uh, it's the most delightful. Right. Are you saying slug like the slimy little like, bug or slug? Like, thing. Yep, yep, yep. Eugene Slug Queen Festival. Lots of slugs it. in Oregon, right? This part of Oregon, anyway. Yeah. That moist wow. atmosphere. <laughs> oh God, what is her name this year? I got to look her up now because it's got me going. Uh, it's <laughs> every I time the idea of slut queen though. Well, I'm sure that that happens at uh, old uh, Burning Man, you know, Ooh. the the slut camp is like the oldest Burning Man camp in all of yeah. Yeah. Burning Man. They got prime seat in it right underneath the burn. Um, so it's an acronym for the Society of the Legitimization of Ubiquitous Gastropod. This, Love it. It's such a Eugene thing. Only I, in Eugene, right? <laughs> okay. I was hoping that they would list all of the queens, right? She presides and she does quite a few different things. I want to say the last time I was there for one, it was Sluggerella, Sluggerslu or something like that. And she historical in some way. I saw a picture of the slug queen this year because she's part of the LGBTQ community. So she's friends with a lot of my friends, but um, I can't remember her name for some reason. Let's uh, go on to our next. Uh, Leslie, do you need to come? Leslie, back to the table. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. We're just going to pick the next one. That's all. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Cover it up. You don't have to cover up all of it. You have to cover up some of it. Flora Boley believes that you should, that sometimes you have to cover up 95% of your painting to be successful. Uh, this is a great opportunity for some blending too, if you want, obviously, because you're going to be covering it up. This is where we have to divorce ourselves from how attached we get to our paintings. You deliberately picked that for me, didn't you? You know, I try really hard to be a, a pleaser, so what can I say? I'm no, you're always trying to get me to cover all the page, all the pages. This whole exercise is going to get you to cover the whole page. It's going to get you to cover pieces on top of pieces. You'll find great delight once you, you do it and you make some mistakes and be like, what? Why does that look like that? 
I actually found uh, an image that I used to have. <laughs> Audrey's laughing at me. It's super productivity day in the studio today because the ceramicists have to prepare for the holidays. And so we have to have like a glaze kiln every week. <laughs> Audrey's hiding stuff from herself. My uh, zinc white really isn't doing much covering it up, is it? <laughs> you know, I'm going to get really scary. I'm going to bring in some black. Woo! Woo! It's getting real in here if I bring in black. I probably won't bring in black. I'm going to bring in this color called muted gray, which kind of looks like a purple black. Ah! Fuck. Excuse my French. Sorry. No? Is everything okay? Yeah, I'm just trying something. Hey, that's the whole point. You could say Mared instead. <laughs> say what? Mared? M E R D. Oh, yes. Or you yeah, could say French. French. It sounds so much better. <laughs> there's lots of words I shouldn't be saying, but yes. I can say I one. do not speak French very poorly. Je ne parle pas français. Je ne parle pas français. I can tell oh, you guys oh. how to say fuck you in Chinese. Do you want to hear that? Yes, please. And yeah, then nobody would maybe understand one day I'll that. tell you how I learned it. <laughs> <laughs> it that sounds like a tale for drinking. In a live Chinese market in which I was physically pulled down by my big backpack <laughs> onto the ground by a tiny little old Chinese lady. Uh, the she word, mugging you? I, we were having an argument about bananas. Oh. Uh, she was like, <laughs> as one does. As as one she wanted me to buy her bananas at a ridiculous price. I was like, I'm not buying your bananas. We were back and forth. And I finally looked at her and said, chow ni which means fuck you oh, <laughs> wow. and she leapt over the table and <laughs> grabbed me by my you know big backpacker backpack and just slammed me to the ground on your ass that's what we call that i kept saying she was she kept saying buy my bananas i kept saying tug wheelie too expensive tug wheelie tug wheelie tug wheelie and then she was like she said, fine and so we stared at each other she's like holding the bananas in her hand she's yelling um one price i'm saying no and then she says fine on the lower price and then i ask her for change and that was it oh. <laughs> she was asking a ridiculous price for those bananas i will say just because <laughs> you were white you had money well i did <laughs> like that wasn't the point I was like it was just she was asking too much um it wasn't it was a principal thing <laughs> in Madagascar you would get two different prices yeah you would get a, a price that they would say in French which I don't speak French I would tell them I don't speak French and then at the time my girlfriend would speak in Malagasy and we would get a completely different price in yeah. Malagasy oh, yeah what yeah, yeah. Nina, what does tabernac mean? Oh, it means like F U in a way. It's a, that's a good way. Mared is S H I T. Yeah. I don't like, yeah, that one's an easy one. Mared. Beautiful. Today in abstract art class, we learned how to code <laughs> other languages. Yep. <laughs> I think we did this with Sandra once in one of these other classes. Oh, yeah, we she knows French. This is like ringing. Um, yeah. Yes, well, she told us how to swear and all kinds. And Sandra also speaks like Korean, Chinese, yeah, Japanese. Sandra. Yeah, she's one of those like insane. Ooh, gee. Okay, like once you learn like two or three, is, you really is this, get it. Yes. Is this covered up enough or does it, do I get to use my own judgment on what's covered up enough? That's a great you get question. to use your own judgment. This is where you get to choose, like, what is the decision that you're making? Oh, I do like it. Isn't it cheap? Oh. I think this might be one of my favorites so far, Jean. But we don't know what it's going to end up like. 
I know. We don't know. I'm, I'm, we trying, not, to... I'm trying not mm -hmm. to be precious about it, and I'm going to just keep going, whether I like right. it or not. The thing well, about the Tabernacle, thing is... it's actually French Canadian, right? So the French from Canada is a little bit different. Yeah, yeah right. I am, I am slowly, uh, very, very slowly teaching myself French, listening to all the French Canadian music from Letterkenny. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> myself. Oh, God. <laughs> Friends that definitely dressed as skids for Halloween. My favorite <laughs> saying about their costume, A, it's hilarious because it just looks like Audrey. Like that, right? right. Everything. Right. So Audrey thought they dressed as her for Halloween. <laughs> but the best part was that they had a uh, speaker attached to them that played really bad EDM music. So they were having raves everywhere they went. That's fucking awesome. That was really what what made them win. <laughs> Love it. Okay. So. We've done some covering up. Leslie, how's your covering up going? It's good. I'm kind of. Yeah, about it. That's okay. No, I. it's okay. I'm just sort of trying some different oh, wow. things. And that's what this whole process is about is what if we tried something I else? I will send it over. Red I... Rover. Yeah. <laughs> Back okay. in grade school gym as we speak. I'm gonna send my picture. I got to get rid of what, one of my ugly contours. Oh, see, I like the way you covered it up. Thank you. I really like your coffee grounds. I yeah. And then that one to the left of that is my actual coffee <laughs> on a paper towel, I, which really worked better. That first one is a, a Kleenex. <laughs> I wish that I had brought Audrey just um, pulled up. She has this really interesting process of putting down gesso and using watercolor and like removing the watercolor as a reduction process. I'm not very good at it, but it looks really beautiful and delightful. Um, my brain doesn't think backwards like that. My brain thinks about adding, not subtracting. Um, but she just pulled a bunch and I should have brought one in. Okay, here we go. Next one. What is it gonna be? Oh, this is my favorite one. Uh, it's rage scribble. Do you guys remember rage scribbling? Yes. It's yeah. really going to test y'all too. How much are you going to rage scribble over? Are you going to rage scribble over all of it? Are you going to rage scribble in one section? Jeannie, how much are you going to cover it up? <laughs> we won't know. So we're done. Now we can do anything. We can use any, any media, media any what? material. Just remember, obviously, we have a couple more layers. I'm, what I'm going to probably do is go till about 4.30 on these paintings using different layers. We have a, still a whole handful of different options, so we're good right now. Um, and then we'll reset and add some more stuff. Hmm. It's been a long time since I rage scribbled. It just feels so good. Good thing to do it today because we're getting our booster shots tomorrow and I don't think my arm would feel good doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, I took a big chunk out of that oil pastel. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because you get going and you're like, oh, this is just so good. It did feel good. It's a really fun, like, first layer on a really big painting. Just to really muck it up. I'm clearly just going super dark today. <laughs> well, today is, today is, uh, the second day of Dios de los Muertos, right? So we're it still is. first and second. Yep. Still thin, right? Are you okay over there? You need us to make fun of you? 
Oh, shit, a broken crayon. I like the black. Also, I like the idea of crayons being broken during this exercise. <laughs> uh -huh. That's how you know you're doing it right. I'm actually going to get a paper towel and lift up some of it. <laughs> Leah, I wish you could see this table of ceramics that Audrey is trying to sort right now. Oh my God. So is this your new load? Is this your new? The she just pulled one out just a couple of days ago, but she's basically got, I think she said she has, she thinks she has six kiln loads ready for the oh season. Oh my God. And she's you guys have a kiln there? You're going to sell it all. Well, we definitely um, probably could have sold more last year if we'd had it. So Audrey is on top of it. You're going to sell it all. Trust me. Let's sprinkle her goodness through the world with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tried to get online and order a mug, and every time I clicked on the one I wanted, they were sold. Yeah, it's hard to catch your hands on it. Yep. Yeah, but that's okay. Yeah, yep. we're going to get what I want eventually. <laughs> we are um, doing our first preview, live preview this year for the holiday season. So we're going to have a holiday party and do. Oh, and I, that would be fun, uh, actually. Yeah. Are you doing that? any of it? Are you doing any of it remote? So, so could people? Yeah, everything we, um, all of our releases are released online at the same time they're released live. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, so we set up our, we set up our gallery so that it sells through our website. Um, and that allows us to sell in person and online because Audrey's got a lot of friends and family in Michigan and stuff. So mm -hmm. that way it shows current inventory. You're never buying something out that somebody else has already bought. Um, and we pay a lot of attention to pull the product immediately. So yeah, it's going to be a really exciting um, season. We're bringing in a bunch of bunch of artists, Leah being one of them, and we are um, we got a bunch of gifts in. And then Audrey and her assistant have been super, super producing. So it's going to be lots of fun. It, if our experience, both of our experiences at our various open studio events is anything to go for. People are into supporting, people are coming out with their checkbooks, which is nice. Uh, it's kind of beautiful, actually, how much the community has come out. For I'm, I'm going to go to Janet's open studio this weekend. <gasps> Good. Oh, my God. Bring a sketch pad and you can draw with her. You I, don't, I don't know if I'll have time to stay all day, but I'm stay long enough to actually participate in drawing. But I'm definitely going to go visit some of the, her yeah. studio and some of the other studios. I am so glad you're going to love it. You're going to absolutely love it. Because oh, I love her work so much. I can't wait to see it in person. I know. It's real. That's it's right. You don't see that, it in right? person. That's so exciting. Okay. Here is where I am, which currently looks like a disaster, but I have faith in my abilities to finish it up. <laughs> We're going to be <laughs> on the pole. Uh, like this, it's all these beautiful grays, right, Mina? That's your, that's your jam. Here we go. What's next? Sorry, yep, yeah, I like the grays. I like light I colors. Um, I'm going to take a picture of mine then. Yeah, take yeah, a picture. Okay, Let's see what's it. happening. The next, the next layer is really easy, everyone. You have to rotate your paper. <laughs> New oh, I did that once already without asking. Sorry. <laughs> well, okay. you want to, but it's good for people to, to have to, to bring a new perspective on. Oh, Nina, that's looking interesting. Thanks. Leslie, that's looking great. You guys, these are looking great. I like it. I really enjoy all the pink. Oh What's man, really look nice at is you great shriveled the crud out of that. Good job. <laughs> yeah, I, I found the uh, water soluble graphite sticks. I'm glad you mentioned them. They're Those great. are the best. They are the best. That's what I, I wish I had right now. Yeah. I have, I finally really um, got my stuff organized. So I have one set of all of my water soluble graphite sticks, my water soluble colored pencils, and my water soluble pastels at my studio and at my house. Cause I have a pretty, especially during the holiday season cause so much of what we're doing is at the gallery is like event based or sales based that like my only real work time is my sketchbook practice at night. Um, so I do a lot of sketchbooking which means I just need to not take that stuff back and forth. 
Okay. Here we go. Here's our next one. Okay. Christy, yep. I like yours so much better rotated. Yeah. See? Isn't that weird? Uh, yeah. I mean, this is the thing. This is where, you know, like when I taught you guys how to make those little like view uh -huh. windows, it makes a, it's a very big difference, even just rotating it. Um, uh, you know, Flora Bowley really believes that you should rotate it every couple of steps just so that you aren't getting too comfortable. Um, I think that we think when we're making something, we start at one direction and think that's the direction that it's supposed to go. And it's not always the best direction for it. Um, you know, if we don't take the time to, to pay attention to balance, this is actually, interestingly, I've rotated it this way because it makes me uncomfortable. I typically don't like to have dark colors on top. Um, I like to have lighter colors on top because automatically a dark color makes a painting feel weighted down. And sometimes mm -hmm. you want that. For the most part, I don't want that. Um, but this exercise always makes me kind of try new things and really try something different. Um, and we'll see where we go. Are we ready for our next step? Yep. Yeah. Non-dominant hand. So you can oh. make any kind of mark you want to make Ooh. and relate to your, your painting with whatever medium you want to. You just have to do it with your non-dominant hand. If you're ambidextrous, free step for you. <laughs> This is the part where I never can make it do what I want it to do, but I'm ready to handle it. Not doing that. Uh, it's interesting to me how fatigued my left hand gets. <laughs> how fatigued? Oh, fatigued. Yeah. yeah, it does. Like, yeah, like it's like, oh, I'm not used to doing this. This kind of, this kind of makes me tired and hurts a little bit. Will we be able to save you painting? I don't know. Oh, I, all I see is a beautiful, as a beautiful book. I, this is where I have, you know, like you have to challenge yourself in the ways that you uh, interact with your own artwork is that we have, a, we have ideas about what it should look like. And I like kind of cleaner um, paintings, but it's good for me to be challenged. Yeah. yeah. Did you both have open studios in the last few weeks? Um, I did. had hers in July and yeah. I had mine. She's in a town that's about 90 miles uh, west of me in Portland. So theirs was in July and ours was, you know, a couple uh, weeks ago. A couple weeks ago. But Krista is the president of our, ah, okay. of our open studios because yeah. otherwise I'd lose my mind. <laughs> it was yeah. my mind. Uh, and she needs some help. And then we were able to do amazing things. And now they've got their hooks in me. So <laughs> got hooks in us. They're obviously doing a great job. <laughs> I have to say we are an extremely good team. Uh, the things that I do, that Krista does the things that I cannot do, that lots of people can't do. Finance, like back you know bookkeeping like but but not just that big, big systems general. creation big yeah. vision and systems creation but yeah. she also has the artist like she has all the visual artist skills that you need for that and she's got a very or like along with this incredibly organized mind uh and i am like 
better as a kind of writer communicator, like getting the word out, designing the, you know, trying to get the word out about our, what we do out to the public. Also yes. fantastic at getting the news to cover us. So, yeah. um, so like between the two of us, we can kind of manage those, you know, like we can manage. We just put it selling it. So if you recruit good artists and stuff yeah. like that. Really yeah, yeah. Sales and it's, and I'm getting better with marketing sales and marketing but chris has got more of the marketing than i do but i'm learning we're i don't know i think we're doing great i think next year's going to be great although did you see design week is dead no yeah oh, no it's an email today. really okay you go Jeannie. whole <laughs> new direction i'm i think excited you also if you like your painting at an earlier stage you still have a record of it so yes. if you wanted to you could kind of go back and replay around with that image you know what i mean like yeah. there's well, no wrecking it really because we it's all recorded yep. okay we're gonna move on it, it, as long as leslie's ready to move on yeah i'm ready okay so this is an interesting one i forgot that how good these were audrey I really forgot how good we did good good we did on these. This is color we're averse to. I want you to use one color that you're naturally not inclined to use on your painting. Um, it's cool. a good challenge. For a long time, mine was purple. <laughs> well, it still is certain shades of purple kind of make me want to Ralph inside my mouth. <laughs> No. Like colors that every time you put it on there, you're like. Can, can I use my right hand? You can. Oh, we can? <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. You don't have to, it, every layer, it kind of resets for you. We, there's, there's some limitations, but hopefully enough freedom that you're able to make good decisions for yourself. Like how to lose your tools course because that's really what I excel at it's always in the mucky water that's always the answer so I'm working on taking back the color ochre it just makes me oh uh, this is raw umber sorry I'm not a big brown fan I don't oh know. I love brown I'm working on it so we're going to use I hate raw umber. Excellent decision. <laughs> it's too green. It's hard, right? <sighs> so I'm going to I'm going to work on it. I'm going to force myself. And you can do it. You can add it any way you want to. Obviously, that's the point. <laughs> It's kind of nice on this painting just because of the darkness of the painting. It's kind of like luxurious feeling. <laughs> this is a weird vinyl paint, which is really fun to play with. It's definitely a top, la top layer kind of guy. And then when we're done with this layer, we're going to pull one more layer and then you guys get one layer of doing whatever you think you might want to do to fix it, so to say. <laughs> Sometimes you're just too far gone. That's always when I, my plug is always find a really pop color that you haven't really used too much of and make just a couple of small marks enough to really draw the eye in. 
I think mine needs an ambulance at this point, but you know. <laughs> so a red flashing light. Right. <laughs> Just something to like, you know, like on a primarily blue painting, you would pull in some bright orange because it's going to draw attention to the blue. It's going to have the blue stand out. This is really like, this concept is really you know, like a derivative, you know, derived from the work that um, Joseph Albers did in, in helping us root out how color changes when it's paired with other colors. I didn't get to tell you guys that Audrey for um, my birthday ordered me a large, huge format of the book that I have of Joseph Albers and they put the prints, all of his oh, nice. the book and they put all the instructions in the other book and they're super oversized. She had to order it from Italy. And so then when you open them, you can see the prints, the examples and the discussion of the ideas and the context side by side, which if you've read Joseph Albers book, you have to flip basically from the text information to the back to the prints, to the text information to the back to the prints. And it's much more enjoyable, super large format, which also really cool about this edition is some of the, some of the plates have top plates that like flip up or things that move like ways that he designed them originally in doing these exercises that were more interesting. Um, How it, cool is that? It is really a great book. Okay. okay. Are we ready for our last last uh, layer? Let's yeah. make it something good. Something good, Carissa. And I'm not going to look. Okay, here we go. Blend. Wouldn't have chosen blend, but blend. blend. In theory, what that would mean is a wash of some sort that blends in with other layers. Um, I do like to finish off. What kind of works out for me is that I like to finish off. And then, like I said, anything else that you need to do to pull your pieces together, um, you can do. So for me, I'm going to, I'm going to use watercolor on top of all of this acrylic. I'm going to pull in some orange, which is going to be a really interesting pop with all this purple, black, and gray. And I hopefully will, you know, be able to create some moments where the the translucency of the watercolor will blend naturally with its the acrylic and layers below. We'll see if I'm successful. This is like the on-site event medic trying to save save the person before they have to go away in an ambulance. <laughs> Good night. It's probably pizza night or something. Oh, totally. Baked potato night. Okay, I'm going to send you all a picture in its wet state, knowing that it's going to dry and look very different once it dries. Okay. The orange, I would say, was mildly successful. Interesting. Uh, this little corner is nice, though. I would probably cut it down. 
Yeah, I'll look at you go, Jeannie. How do you feel about it? That's a lot of action on a piece of paper for you. <laughs> I, I actually, I used white water down to blend and I just did the edges and I, I do, I do like it. Yeah. Because it brings the center into focus. Yep, it masks it out a bit. It's really nice. Um, masking is definitely something that takes time to get really good, but is such a great, you know, thing whenever you're having a hard time with something, I always add um, some thinned out white. And I, I think you're right. I think that it brings the center into focus, which, you know, is the whole point is to, you're the artist, you get to determine at what, what people notice. I like the way that the blue marks can be seen underneath all of the red. Mm -hmm. So I also like the pattern of your table underneath. <laughs> That's been, dollar store placemats. I like it. I'm into it. I've been collecting um, resource guides. I have a class this weekend, an in-person class. We're doing a... Uh, beeswax collage class in which I'm going to teach people how to dye paper and then they're going to create a collage with it and they're going to seal it with beeswax. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah, it's a really fun, fun class. And so I've been collecting like textile pictures and stuff like that, repetitive patterns to help people figure out how to make their own collage paper. Um, and that mat would be a great example. And it's cheap. <laughs> I can't say no to a dollar. I think I can do it. Oh, that's oh, I'm, I'm making Well, blending is a little hard. It's what I'm doing is not working. I wish I tried some white out on top and it kind of smeared white out. Yeah, it's you not know, working like I thought, but uh, hang Nina, on. I I really like your colors on yours because I yeah, think that- she's dialing that in. Yeah, yeah you really told us to use color. Otherwise I was happy to use grays and blocks. <laughs> well, the thing though, it's like what makes, in, in my experience with gray paintings, what makes them really successful is knowledgeable use of color. A tiny bit of pink with gray completely changes the dynamics of, of the painting. Mm -hmm. And frankly, neutrals like that are hard. They're hard to make look good for people. So I applaud the the honors work that you're doing. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Audrey's mom moved here from Michigan, and she was telling Audrey that, uh, and we've officially moved into the wet season in Astoria since we live at the, you know. At the, the point at which the Columbia River meets the Pacific Ocean, it's very wet here and very gray. Um, and her mom said to her the other day, gray used to be my favorite color, but I think I'm gonna have to find a new favorite color. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, just so that you guys know, I'm waiting until something exciting happens on that paper and I'm making a little reel on Instagram. So. Okay. You don't mind. I, nobody should be very visible. It'll mostly be Carista's painting we're watching, but hey, okay. thought it would be fun class. Time to reset new pieces of paper and to let these ones dry. Um, I will not be using black in this next one. I'm going to challenge myself to use some brighter color palettes. Uh, I clearly have been doing spooky Halloween paintings too much for the last little bit. Hmm. Ooh. I love it. Oh, the little circles. I'm into the circles, Jeannie. Les, I love the different materials that you use. Oh, <laughs> the knowledge that it is, you know, things that you found around. It's all office supplies. Those little circles are like reader board letters yeah. that I, I put dry erase marker on. <laughs> I have always wanted to have an art competition. I took an art class when I was in college where one of our big projects was, I think you got like $7 at the dollar store and you had to create your, create your entire midterm project using the things that you could buy at the dollar store. Oh and yeah, that it. would be fun. Um, and so I've always wanted to do a creative competition where basically people sign up 
you give them the same smorgasbord of weird materials and they have to use all of the materials in their work and to see who comes up with the best work. Um, That's a great idea. I think it would just be really fun to see the kind of weird things that people come up with. I always provide spatulas in my painting classes for people because they're a great like scraper surface. Um, so I imagine things like that would be in it. Your circles from your poster board would totally be in it. Also, we, like, you should do that for our last class of the year. Just send it to everybody and just everybody send, has to create And everyone has it. to use the same oh. materials and then you give us no instruction. We just I all have to use the same material. That's oh, actually we'll not a bad idea. We'll see who comes up with what. Let's see. Yeah. Right, you know, right. It I won't be it, there. There'll be no judging the best, but we'll just see how they come out. I the, the, we're never judging uh, the best here. Leslie, you are one hundred percent correct that adding the big black marks makes it look a lot better. It does. I wanted to put a lot of white on top. I wish I had some white paint. That would have helped it because it's too much going on, you know. But I think black looks good. So, so can I paint. jump in here and just say that this is definitely something that translates to representative work? Uh, you start with like kind of series of sort of mushy light, medium and dark patches, I like to say. And then what finishes it is like a few hard, strong black lines. So when you're working representationally, so there's no reason why that wouldn't work with abstract as well. Our yeah. eye kind of wants that varied mark making and the black is yeah. usually the last you know, thing or, or one of the, the later things. Um, well, and on Leslie's stuff, it makes the pink pinker and the yeah. green, blue green. Yeah. yeah. Right. It makes me think I've been looking at a lot of 80s advertising lately. Yeah, I know. It's not as saturated as I like. That's why right. I'm like, but oh, these crayons are so light. <laughs> I was telling Audrey that I forgot about the um, trend in the 80s of taking the sun and putting it in tiny little strips and then having like it like hot orange or hot orange and purple with these black lines across oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or like in the weird tropical plants with the sun. Like, I forgot about that trend until I started doing some research, kind of falling down the hole. If you can believe it, I used to wear all pastel pink all the time. I like pastel it. pink leggings and pastel pink high tops. I had a pastel pink puffy coat. I should you not. I had a pink 10 speed. You what would give Jean a heart attack if she saw you walking down. <laughs> and nobody had cameras back then. So you can't, thank God, right? But yeah. I, I'm telling you, I have, because I'm kind of looking at like the roots. When you think about the roots of your creative self, for me, I was born in 81. So the 80s were my very earliest years. And when, like my mom, she got married in the late 80s and I remember that my grandmother sewed her wedding dress and two matching dresses for me and my sister oh, cool. and it was a wedding dress from her like a virgin video my grandma replicated it for my mom and then replicated tiny purple versions for me and my sister love it you, know? Do you still have it I wish oh uh, I, I still have, have both my dresses from eighth grade Leslie, and Leslie, I just sent you a picture of your dog <gasps> I love that dog. <laughs> oh my God. A friend of mine does dog sitting and he was like, look at those people's dog that they he brought it into my apartment to show. Do you me. know what they dyed it with? God, I, I have it's no jello. idea. And there's, there's even, you can't see it in the picture, but there's feathers braided into the ear. Oh on my the fucking God. <laughs> like, can you imagine how much that costs to get? I used to oh, braid feathers oh, into my oh, hair. <laughs> Oh my God, with the side pony and the yeah, yeah. feathered earrings. <laughs> I was such a weirdo. Um, I actually, so my mom was a purple person, which is the reason I hate it. Uh, and so she made me wear all purple, but I was an 80s kid and I have curly hair. And so I have all of the really big hair photos, like oh, all of yeah. really big hairstyles because my mom would just rat out my hair and it would just be like <laughs> massive. And then I'd be wearing like, high tops, new kids on the block shirt, and matching like spandex. You know, like, how can you not love it? I still would live in the same styles. I, yeah, I do yeah. not deny 
Do you know yeah, what I, I wore the, like if you add it all my the money 20s, I black spent, leggings, white t-shirt, white yeah. high tops. All the yep. money I spent in the 80s on perms. See? Because I you had to have, have curly hair then. I have, you know? My oh dad. my god, me too. It was awful. <laughs> So bad why did people not tell us they look so bad why <laughs> why no. if you're I, look know. At, I look back on it now fondly and i kind of love it you know i mean i remember oh, seeing I the shoulder hair would be spiral curled and the girls oh. and thinking i love my hair to look like that of course it never did i just look like yeah. a pretty poodle um but like I mean, we all get it. <laughs> I, I looked like a poodle for a week, and then for a week it looked really good, and then I looked like Bose of the Clown because it would grow out straight, and then it yeah. would be curly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, I mean, like this is the easiest one. way to like have your hair because you can just let it dry and not have to do anything to it. Well, you have to you have to prep it though because like you have to like, mm -hmm. well didn't you guys use paul mitchell freeze and shine oh yes hell yes <laughs> big hair Leslie and i are the old ladies here we memories know. I'm like than both of you you are not are you i am too i'm much older than you are are you oh. you are I'm not 62. are you fucking kidding me what? I missed that. She's 62. Oh, Whatever. I'm fucking going to be 60 in June. I do. Not, I, I I'm just telling you, I'm just telling I'm, I'm, I'm telling her I'm old, much older than she is. And she didn't believe Look me. Look at that baby face genie over there. I know. What <laughs> the fuck? Jeannie, I thought you were 10 years, 15 years younger than me. <laughs> well, thank you. But Leslie, you don't look, real. you could not possibly be 60. Anyway, I'm, 50. I'm 59 and a half. All right, all I right, all right. We're all the old ladies, the, the old lady section over here. I turned forty this year. Forty yeah. is fabulous. It's just the baby. I think Nina's younger than you. I'm thinking maybe I'm Nina's wrong. Like I'm not saying a word. He's not saying a word. <laughs> he won't even let us see her. I I like it. Nina's like a woman of mystery. <laughs> My God, I was miserable when I was young. You guys, I was fucking drop dead gorgeous, and I was the. I'd rather be who I am now any day. You're still I just like was the most unhappy young that. person. You know, and that's age helps you find happiness in different ways. It does. I mean, I, I didn't get my shit together till like my dad died, you know. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it takes, right? We were talking about yeah. this. You know, I worked in that food cart with a friend of mine, and he was just such a mess when he was younger. We were talking about this today. Let's get back to our I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna film y'all. So here we go. We are gonna pull our first layer. What's it going to be? Is it going to be boring? Dots. Oh, I need more. Dots. Well, say it again. Say that again. I need more paper, though. Hold on. Keep keep talking. Yeah. Yeah. Dots. So any oh, size. Dots. Okay. Like dots. Stipling, big dots, little dots. I feel like I could go forever about dots. Dots are actually a, a big thing of mine. I love them. I'm sorry, sorry I'm not ready. Boring video. I'm going to mask this this time and see what happens. <laughs> this is a nice exercise for you all on a cold wet evening you're snowed in your apartments and is it snowing in new york oh no but it did uh start snowing in michigan i saw oh okay <laughs> i haven't looked at the weather in a long time okay audrey just made barfy sounds <laughs> It slushed a little bit. I saw a news, I saw a lot of news things said they got their first. Cause it made me, Audrey was telling me about when she was a kid, that, uh, that Halloween was always the first snow. Like that they at least got, you know, some kind of slush or something. And can I use stickers? If you want, yeah, I'm totally into this. You can also use stencils. I have a lot of stencils um, and they're a great resist, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Audrey's not checking the weather. She said it's 31, so it's definitely. Oh, really? It's supposed to snow in Toronto tonight at 10 o'clock at night. See? So how did you know? I had no idea. Okay. I thought randomly on somebody's Instagram, probably, because, you know, Tuesdays are actually my busiest day. It's the day I'm the least plugged in. And yes. uh, somehow I saw it. And I only really paid attention to it because Audrey and I had just had that conversation. You know, we do not, it's rare for us to get snow before December in any of them. Yeah. Wow. Thanksgiving is like sometimes. Um, don't ever be afraid to pull, you know, like use another piece of paper that you don't really care about and pull off the, the extra, you know, like it's a useful thing, even though it kind of messed up my painting, but it's the first layer. It's going to get covered hundred percent. Let's be real. I don't like to have residual water between layers is my thing. So that kind of messy dots, but that's fine. What were you going to say, Nina? I can't remember, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened with your place in the end? I feel like I've asked you this a long time oh, ago. Oh, yeah. So they, the people that bought our um, duplex are from Huntington Beach, California, if you really want to know like how real estate works in Astoria. Uh, I think there was, we were told that there was 10 bids on the house. One of them was local. Every single one of them was from out of state. Um, and a Huntington Beach, California couple bought it. They have a second home in Astoria. And so they are here, I think once a month and they gave us new leases. Um, they didn't even raise our rent, which nice. blows wow. people's minds. That never happened nice. in Astoria. They didn't even raise our rent. And they're giving us a full um, lease for a year and we can extend at that point if we want. We're really hoping that in a year we will be looking to purchase something ourselves and that we'll just be kind of month to month until we buy a house. And they're, they know that the, like buying a house is our goal. So they're going to work with us to write the letters documenting that we pay our rent on time and all of that kind of stuff. So Oh, lovely. So it was good people. Yeah, they, I mean, it, they're great people. And what's nice about it is that we were kind of a self-governing household anyway, between us and the upstairs neighbors. Like we just communicate and we do what we have to do. Um, and I like that they're not local and in our business all the time. Business all the time. We would come home and our... and that um, we are able to continue living. We spent a lot of money on our garden. Mm -hmm. We really, um, you know, invested because we were supposed to be here somewhat long-term. So thank you for asking. We're very happily, I'm excited to put a Christmas tree up. Um, last year, we didn't get to put one up in our house because our apartment was too small. We put it up in our studio because it's retail space, but uh, it'll be nice to put one in our house this year. Yay! Okay, to our next layer. Oh, see, this is one we haven't done yet. Word or words. You can add a phrase. You can think about how you're feeling today. You can, luckily, what's kind of nice about where it is right now is, is you're likely to cover it up. So you can add kind of whatever you want word-wise. You can add as many words or as few as you want, as long as there's at least one.
I'm going to get some paper for my sale. Okay. Look, I'm falling. My um, painting looks kind of like a game board. So I use the word start because it's <laughs> like right now. Um, talk about really off the cuff and really just going whatever. I know that for a lot of places it's voting. So I'm sure there's some stuff going on everywhere there. Hey, okay. let me know when you guys are ready for the next layer. I'm ready. That pink poodle. I'm ready. I can start. <laughs> Okay. Okay. That's not so convincing. Did you hear her? Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Oh, Audrey wants to pick our next la next layer. I love it. You should see the go, bird. Audrey, go. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, Audrey's picking our next layer. No. Oh. <laughs> Are you allowed to put it back? You just just have dots. Let's See? not do it round two. I don't know if she comes in and messes it all up. <laughs> Color your adverse two. Okay. Oh. Color your adverse two. So for you, it's any color. <laughs> I didn't hear yeah. that. But <laughs> okay. it Thanks. Uh, color that you don't want to use. Color your. Oh, adverse. okay. This is always an easy one for me because I just look at my watercolor pan and see which one is the nicest. It's clearly the one that I don't like, which is going to be one of these weird mucky greens in here. <laughs> hey, Audrey, would you like to pull up a piece of paper? I'm just putting off work. Uh, you can put off work by pulling up a piece of paper and joining us. <laughs> that thing. I wish you guys could see my dog. She has been absolutely ridiculous, clearly almost. <clears throat> I don't like this color. That's the whole point. <laughs> it's a little harder when you don't like the color, huh? Well, it's a color that I like, but that I don't. It's red. Oh, I'm not a big fan of red. Uh, well, it just doesn't go with a lot of stuff. And then if you put green in it, it just looks Christmassy. And, and it's just so bright and bold. Is my it's fan. too bright. I agree. I'm 100% with you there. I'm going to use this weird. One of the reasons I don't like this one is because it's kind of a waxy watercolor. You know how some of them are like more opaque. And it's just kind of not cool. Not cool at all. So we're going to we're going to roll with it. I feel like I'm definitely still um, feeling the Halloween vibes with my gray and weird uh, Green. Okay, you guys have got to see my dog. She is ridiculous. It's clearly almost dinner time. Is she all dyed pink with feathers braided into her ears? <laughs> she is staring at me. And with on the couch, because we have a couch in our studio, and she uh -huh. is looking at me with this face. Here you go. My dog is the sassiest dog in the world. She's like, hello, feed me now. <laughs> so how are our not great color uh, layers going? It looks mm -hmm. like someone smeared poop all over my. <laughs> it, right. it looks very patriotic. But that's OK, yeah. <laughs> OK, let's go on to our next next one. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Rage Scribble. Okay. 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 Got this. Oh, puppy. Yeah, she's being sassy. She's obsessive. She just sometimes at home sits on the other side of the coffee table and stares at me. 
just like sits perfectly and stares at me. I'm like, what do you want? Why don't you just have a staring contest with her? Uh, sometimes I do. Sometimes yeah. I just stare back. And I always win because that's a dominance thing. But the, the <laughs> I'm the boss. You have to be the alpha or, the, or she's out of control. I have a dog that is a, do a breed that uh, works on dominance a lot. They try to always be dominant. So she can never be the dominant one. Aww. I know. Our trainer was like, he, she, she's not allowed to ever be the dominant one. You have to always win. If you're going to start something, make sure it's something you can finish. What happens if you don't? It just, um, so a great example of that was that I was letting her, you like, they talk about even like letting her on the bed. You have to make sure that you only invite her up, that she's never allowed up on the bed when you don't give her permission. Otherwise she does things like, uh, she will eat food off the, top of the counter, even though it's your food. She's not no, supposed no, to touch your food. No, no. Like, Oh, Leslie. Oh, we're doing rage scribble, aren't we? Fuck, I just yeah, want to I lost that fight with my cats a long time ago. <laughs> oh, I am mediocre at best about it. I try really hard, though, to be conscious of it. Um, I don't start tug of war with her unless I'm willing to make sure I win. Um, mm -hmm. That's definitely a dominance thing. Um, and she acts better when I am the dominant one. She's nicer to people. She's not barking all the time. It's probably one of her problems right now is, is that she's been getting away with being the boss too much. How's everyone's rage scribbles going with their color that they're averse to? I feel oh, like it's, it's, oh, it's not a different color? Oh, yeah. I, I fucked up when I used it's a different color. color. Oh, that, Leslie. I like your word. I like that you literally went out there and got a word. Oh, you know, that's from the College Arts magazine. I <laughs> ripped off the cover. <laughs> I'm into it. Um, <laughs> oh, who is that baby? That's my little baby, baby. Flash. That's my boy. Oh. What breed? He is a train walker coonhound. Yeah. So mine and is. And he's a probably got some blue tick in him. Mine's a plot hound. Yeah. So oh my I God. like that a lot. Good. Gene, I like that. I like that. That's great, Gene. I like it a lot. I love that Gene is suddenly covering her page. She's just going, <laughs> oh, she's oh, going I love it. Awesome, Leslie. This is great. Look at all I the beautiful like puppies. The brand, Gene, I know that you don't like it, but I kind of like it. No, no, no. Oh, I freaking love, love it. it. I'm enjoying it. Um, it's, it's pushing me out of my comfort zone, and I like it. That's the point, right? Yeah. Like, okay. Here's our next level, next layer. Let's hope it's something good. Ugh, yeah. oh, contour drawing. Blind contour drawing, everyone. Okay. Again? Okay. Okay. So, so the words get remixed up because it's a new piece. Uh, there are things we have not done yet. Um, and hopefully we get into them. I don't know if we will. I'm going to use this weird pink pencil that's never used because green and pink are weird together. Oh. I'm just gonna blind contour the dog. She's staring at me anyway, so I might as well stare back, right? Are you starving, Patchouli? Is that terrible human that controls your food bowl starving you and you're gonna die? Julie, you're a really funny drawing. You look like a little kid trying to draw a frog. <laughs> I like the black genie. I like that. Oh, thank you. You got Nina's attention with the blacks and the grays. <laughs> <laughs> I did wear a lot of black and grays as a child, uh, much to my mother's like not liking it. So, 
you know, it's really funny that the things that I wear primarily black and white or black and gray now, even though I paint really bright, big, you know, statements. Um, I don't necessarily always like to dress like that. And then I started dating Audrey and she spent quite, she spent some years in Miami and still looks like it. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> And Which so, is great. I envy color. I That's great. Colorful clothes now. We do weird matching clothes and stuff like that. Okay. You both have everybody? an I'm with stupid t-shirt? Huh? You both have an I'm with stupid t-shirt? Yeah, we don't, but we should. Thank you. <laughs> with, uh, I don't know, sexy as fuck t-shirt or something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Okay, our next our next layer. All right. Okay. Yeah. Rotate easy. Oh. Too sad though. I did did like that version. Um, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Okay, that one's a quick one. So we're going on. Rotate and and now we're going to do oh. pencils only wow we're okay. going to do a lot of work okay. pencils Pencil? does that mean color black and white <laughs> whatever you prefer if you want to use graphite or you want to use colored pencils it's just pencils only the intention of this one is that you're considering marks that are on a up like a micro level because your pencil is only going to go so big right i guess you could have a giant tycon or whatever they're called but I mean, if you want to get out of table size pencil, that's cool too. <laughs> Let's do it. And you can do whatever you want with it, which is the best part. So we're just really working on our mark making today. Building up some wild and crazy layers. Wait, it's easy on this paper that I've just said to like really wear out a pencil or a crayon really fast. You said it's gessoed? Yeah, because it's so rough. Yep, and it just kind of has tooth. I love gessoed paper. It's my favorite surface. Did you pre-gesso it or did you buy it like that? No, I, I gesso it like about a half hour before class. Oh, okay. That's a good idea. It's, it's, I sometimes will pre-gesso like my sketchbook and stuff if I'm going to work in it. I uh, hand okay. make my sketchbooks and they're usually like, like this would be a great sketchbook page because it's not a fully completed painting. And so I would just fold it up and then I sew them together and you never know what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. Good so, idea. Do you use white gesso or do you use like a clear gesso? It's a clear gesso, but I'm white yeah, paper. It's, so. gesso. it's just the tooth on the clear gesso is so brilliant. Yeah. Okay, I'm really holding up the stamina today. I'm really proud of myself. What a way to go. <laughs> Good job, Carissa. Normally I get like three marks in and be like, ah. <laughs> I'm not the obsessive compulsive painter who's like tiny little dots, tiny little dots. I'm like big swipey gestures. Everybody let me know when you're done. I'm done. I'm done. Okay. I'm not, but you can go. I'm going to give you a couple more minutes. I'm going to give myself a couple almonds and then we're going to pull a new layer. Okay. Here comes our next la layer. Okay, it's wash and white. So, we haven't done this layer yet. 
it's best with a watercolor. It can be done with anything. It can be done with pure water. It doesn't have to be done with colored anything. And the idea behind it is it's going to mess up your painting. So you'll, you'll do a wash, you know, put this stuff on your, your page and then you actually wipe it up. So it's kind of a reductionist. You can either pat it up, which is what I prefer to do, or you can actually like physically like mash it around if you want. Wow, this is like a little kid really went to town on this. Can you just wipe it with a cloth or a paintbrush? I do a I do a paper towel because I'm like a dabber. Oh, but if you have a dry paintbrush, you can do that. It has to be dry. I think the idea is that you're adding some liquid and then removing it. Okay, so just plain water is okay. Yep, plain water is okay, especially since you're, especially if you're using water soluble things. Like it has completely changed the face of my painting. Mashed all my stuff around. Parts of it are real mucky. <laughs> Hopefully we get some color, we get to add some layers. Let's see. I'll take a picture of mine, you guys can see. So when you wipe it off, it just cleans it up. Well, the idea though is if you're using water soluble materials, it would it will have modified your your painting. Yeah. Or right, if you're using watercolor or any kind of acrylic paint, the idea is that it will cloud it up a little bit. The intention here is is you're not intended to you're not supposed to be getting precious with anything. And see like this, it like really like smashes everything together and makes it like my dots are no longer as, as clear as they previously were. <laughs> A wet toothbrush. Oh, I like that idea. I love that you used a wet toothbrush. You're killing me with the supplies you're pulling out of your office. I have office. a lot of shit in my office, so. <laughs> this is my new favorite game. I like what? it. I like that. I like that Leslie a lot. Do? Let Leslie, promise me you're not going to brush your teeth with it afterwards. No, I have an extra. I have like three toothbrushes at work. I have, <laughs> I have everything here because I used to spend a lot of time here, so. So this is work work. It's not even your home office work. No, yeah, this is my office office. I'm on office campus office. Uh, two days a week now. So okay. So one day a week. I'm sorry. I changed. Wow. I'm going to squirt, squirt these up. I'm going to mix them up a bit, and then we're going to go on because we're running out of time. Oh, okay. no. It's after five already. No. Blend. So this is a great opportunity for us because... We've been doing a lot of marks. All, all of us, and looking at your photos, have some very like distinctive marks. This is an opportunity for you to make some decisions about how color is going to show up in your painting, and hopefully, you know, start to hone in on some concepts if, if that's at all possible at this point, right? But you can do whatever kind of blending you want to do, whatever color you want. Oh, I could use colors that I already prepped for myself. That would be helpful. The reason that blending is on here is that you will have a lot of abstract artists ask you if you say, oh, I do abstract art. And they'll say, do you blend or do you layer? I'm sure that everybody has opinions about one being better than the other, whatever. My response is always, I do what I want. 
How about just the answer is yes? Yeah, all of it. I like that. Yeah. So we did both today, right? Layer and blend? Yep. And some people will like, especially um, like sunsetty sunsets are super blended, you know, where somebody is really making an effort to go and create a horizon line by really blending everything. Um, layers are more distinctive, like as you can see, these marks are coming through, you know, we're really building up um, a lot of different kind of vocabulary on it. Anything that has like a tree behind it with a moonscape behind it is probably blended to have some kind of atmospheric feeling, which is the kind of paintings I started painting when I first started painting. So I know from experience. Not know what is wrong with this white paint, but it is a turd. I think that I'm just, this is an even bigger car wreck than the previous painting. <laughs> there is no ambulance to save this one. Are we allowed to rotate it again if it, if it helps? <laughs> if you want to, yes, absolutely. Don't be afraid to make decisions like that. Um, the idea is just that if you've been working in it, it reminds you, oh, I've been working with this in one direction and it has not been good. You're right though. We have a tendency to flip it back. So I flipped it back the normal way <laughs> without recognizing that. Yeah, it's. Uh, I will sometimes work on entire compositions from one direction and then turn it a different direction. I was like, I'm like, it's a way better painting this way. I missed uh, all of the opportunity um, and it's really funny because people ask me when they're buying my paintings, like what direction does it go? And before I used to sign on the actual mats, um, I would tell people, well, whatever direction you want it to go, like it's your, yours now. Um, and I realized that people really want you to tell them what direction it was tended to go. So I started signing it so that they knew what was the bottom, right? Because you could see the signature, but I still think you should just flip it whatever way you want. I should do that. Just go home and flip all of our artwork on our walls. <laughs> okay. Was, I like that painting on the walls. There was somebody on Instagram who was painting on walls with watercolor. Wow. Massive. I, 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 I yeah, I don't know if, if I see it again, I'll flip it over, but it was very cool. Take some time. Watercolor is going to be real light. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if it washes off, you know? Okay. Yeah. No, we're not doing that one. Um, our next one is, go figure, cover it up. So we're in the last, uh, you know, 15 minutes or so of class. So we need to start honing in on home run. Cover it up is a great opportunity for you to think to yourself, you know, what parts of my painting do I like? Is there a part that's one particular, that one part that's particularly interesting to me? How can I keep that part while also you know, getting or getting rid of the, some other parts or making it look a little more intentional. I 
any point down. I'm gonna really pull in a popper of a color. Okay, mine's really ugly now. I feel like mine's in a really ugly phase, but I'm going to tell myself, and a reminder is that often when I think it's really ugly is right before it gets really good, but we'll see. Okay. okay. You know, that, and that has proven to be very true in my painting career is that the ugly phase is right before it gets better. Okay. And I don't know if that's because it forces us to make new decisions. Um, it because it forces us to rescue our painting. I, I don't know. Um, mine's pretty ugly too. I'm gonna send you guys a photo. I really covered it up and I think that that's good and okay, but whoa, boy, howdy. I got some nice mucky muck going. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I feel a little bit like we're, oh, I feel like you feel that way, Jeannie, but I think that you're actually in a really good place. The reason okay. that I say that is, oh, I, Nina, I love it. Oh, you do? Okay. So, and that's part of my thing. Ooh. Um, I think it's beautiful. Yeah, I think Nina, it's yours is great. Yeah, I think it's really emotive. Um, what I was going to say, Jeannie, is consider in your forward moving steps some colors that might brighten it up for you, because I think that's probably what you're looking for. Yeah. Uh, a water, a watered down orange, a brighter orange, but not a poopy orange uh, might be helpful, or like a watered down yellow will bring some light into it. And if you do it in thin washes, it will lighten it up for you a little bit. So that's just something to think about. Let's pull another one since we're all at death's door stuff. <laughs> Go ahead, more. Okay. Oh. okay. It's blend. More blend. blend. There's multiple of some of them to fill it out. Yeah. The good news is, though, you don't have to blend the whole thing. You could, it just, it's an opportunity for you to add a layer of a new color. Even just water? Okay, I'm joking. <laughs> I hear you. Um, you could, you could, I will let you get away with more water if that is really what you would like to do. 
or a watery watercolor. Okay. Watery watercolor. Like, use oil pastel for the mug, I realized. So it's not amazing. So sorry. That's okay. My dog has been amped for a couple of days. It's stinky dog. She hates stinky dog. They know not to walk by our studio and yet they still do. <laughs> My dog can smell stinky dog like a block away. So sorry about that, folks. Thanks for being patient with me. <laughs> oh, that dog. All my decisions are literally making it worse. Yeah. <laughs> but you could take like a black marker and just kind of draw an image on it and it would look cool on all of them actually yeah it's a pretty good background this is a great um i used to do a lot of painting backgrounds like this we're going to blend in some blue and see if that adds some joy or if it makes it more like uh the american flag we'll find out which is clearly like so stuck in our brains that we do it when we don't mean to. Well, that wasn't the right decision. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Okay. Oh my God, this is the ugliest thing I've ever made in my life. <laughs> it's I like it. I like the, I like the colors in it. So. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I like I the love baby the word. blue. I'm just like, oh, I wasted that word, but I'll keep it and I'll tear it up. <laughs> you could I cut it up. Like, yeah. I think it's fun to make weird stuff that we're like, like oh, this is this weirdness, you know? Yeah. Uh, like I said, I sometimes turn the stuff like into sketchbooks and then I work, keep working it. Um, I always make jokes that I have a bad kid corner where the paintings go that aren't playing <laughs> well with the world. Yeah. And sometimes things just have to sit there for a little while. I'm like, okay, I'm willing to address you again. That kid corner. Okay. It's just a, so, a lot going on. One more layer. And then we're going to do our recovery layer where we try and save CPR on the paintings and see if it's possible. It might not be. Mine does not look like it. Oh, nothing to make everything worse but a splatter layer. Okay. Oh, okay. that's I love that. <laughs> we'll see. Well, I'm glad it worked for you. Remember also some other splatter tips is if you don't want to splatter the whole paper, hold it over top of your page when you're splattering. It will protect some of it. So there are some ways to control your splatter. It's a splatter layer. Ho okay. Hopefully happy splatter layer for everyone. You can just splatter water if you really want. <laughs> Dirty water, dirty water. Nina's looking for all of the options that don't involve actually modifying it. I will modify it. I just have to figure out a color. It. I will modify it. I just have to figure out a color. I am. I'm gonna but you it. taught us something earlier on where you could cut these up, right? Into scraps? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I have a scrap even right here where I just kept it and it's tiny, right? And then yeah. I can add it to another painting or turn it into its own mini painting. Cause I give this kind of size of painting out a lot. We have what's called an art hole in Astoria, which is an old portal that has two sides with a glass window and it like has a big screw and it opens and people give free art to it. So sometimes I'll just take scraps like that down that I, you know, finish them out, take them down. And people get tiny little scraps. On Instagram, they had this thing, and I don't know if it was an October thing, something called Inchy, where people would like do it like an inch square. Ooh. Is that something that anyone has tried? I haven't, I didn't try it, but I haven't tried it. But that sounds like fun. Oh, anything miniature is fun. Okay, okay. I finally, after an hour and a half, was able to create a reel. Jesus, I've got to get faster. <laughs> But it looks pretty cool, Krista. I know you're not like a turtle fan of this piece, but I like how it comes together. It's really quite nice. 
it is um, currently in, in its recovery zone. Uh, it's, it's still a little half dead. It's got some great moments that I hope will look greater when it dries. Um, you can see that I, you can't really tell, I'll take a picture and send it to you all, that I kept my splatter to a minimum. Just because, I, you know, th I, this section needs to dry. And honestly, <laughs> Leslie, I kind of like the chaos of it. It reminds me of a board game. It's pretty chaotic, yeah. I, the, I think the splatter just made it better. I put some, I, I melted some green crayon See? on it. My splatter improved it. It, it, it often adds a little bit. Um, I think that what mine probably needs is to dry and a little bit of white light and yeah, I need some white. white. Right, and then um, pull some stuff out of it. It's got some beautiful moments though, like that, that is for fact. And when we talk about ways that you can keep part of it, you don't have to keep all of it. Yeah, I can use that. I think it would be good for another collage. Like this section, when I pull out, because this is the size that I do, I sell sketches instead of prints out of my gallery. And yeah. the, this is the size. Um, mm -hmm. I look at this and I think, you know, there's parts of it that are kind of nice that might, oh, okay. you know, might turn into their own piece when they, they don't look so overwhelmingly giant. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, use, I make little frames for my pieces. Actually, I don't make them. That's a lie. Audrey uses our cricket and makes them for me. Oh, I'd love to have a cricket. I think they're great. We What's love a cricket. One for, the, one for the gallery because we can do all of our own vinyl. Oh. And so, um, like this next show, we're we're pulling a whole bunch of people in so that we can just do our own vinyl. We don't have to. Yeah, Jean, this is pretty yeah. dang. Good. I kind of love this last one. Right. I, I, yeah. Oh, Leslie, I think you did this for this. I, I see why it bothers you, but I actually. I think it's yeah. kind of fun. Yeah. Oh, Jean, this might be. Jean, that's beautiful. I, 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 like, I know. Yeah. The splatters made it work. Yeah. 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 Um, this is beautiful. These I are love it. I love Pardon the me, moment love the... that you are filling your page and look how nice yeah. it has. I see a unicorn in it for some reason, maybe because Halloween just happened, but you know. I, I'll, I'll take a unicorn. <laughs> I actually, you know, this tiny, a unicorn corner, in bed? this tiny little corner is my favorite one. I just sent you. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. When yeah. it's not quite so overwhelmingly the whole page. Um, and my other one is drying up. And it's kind of interesting. It's got its purpley stuff and it's you know I'd probably go in like I was telling Jean I'd probably go in with a little bit of light yellow and lighten some of it up it'll make some of it glow too um just because it's a little darker than I like to go but hopefully you guys are finding some moments at least in these problem children that we have created for ourselves at the end I I really like the cup one you know, Nina I I do too. There's like I love the background. There's this way that the colors whirl in and out of it, so yeah. it's, it's like the and color the yellow aura. Out. Yeah, and the, the way marks come through in the purple at the bottom, mm -hmm. um, I, it, it makes me think a lot. You know, I think that obviously coffee is a really beautiful like ritual we get to have a lot. It's a really sacred moment for a lot of people. It's that first thing you do in the morning. That's what it makes me think of, and it makes me think of a really nice morning. Um, oh, good, good. good yeah, good. So it's really nice. It's very enjoyable. I hope that Jean you guys that enjoyed. In a frame. Huh? Jean, put that in a frame. Okay. That's a beautiful one. Yeah, I just, I just put a little bit more black in the upper left corner, and I, I think, yeah, I really, I really like this one. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like the way you built it up. I yeah. think you broken. I think you started off kind of doing the little soldier's theory, right? Of like too much of the same pattern making. And in this one, you absolutely went into your yeah. color strength and you varied your mark making in a very random way. Well, it's it's funny because I decided to do all like purpley colors mm -hmm. and then that's not at all what it ended up being. Yeah. Well, I think it has a lot of movement, actually. Yeah, it's beautiful. yeah, it does. 
the, you know, the what, eye I moves like over. Too. And yeah. I know, Leslie, I like yours too. I fucking look at the Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, I like it. I had really limited materials and colors. I fucking you know, like I had used all crayons, it might be different, but <laughs> I love that you added an extra layer to the challenge. Not only were you like, we're going to do yes, this. I love now. yours. Oh, yes. I love yours. I, I, love yours. I think I, they're also you know, cool. Leslie, I, like I feel like what's interesting about your work right now, because I just looked at a bunch of it, is how um, strong your composition sense is. And, and yeah. how much that's translating to completely different work. Like all Getting really different. This class has really helped. Yeah. I'm Really, yeah. well, that. it's honed what you already have. You already have a strong sense of composition. It's just honing that, I think, yeah. in a way. It's kind of making it more obvious. Um, I like to think we all have these natural understandings. We just don't, since we can't put words on them, we don't really understand them. So, yeah. a sort of classic example is putting that lily, you know, that I have people draw as a beginning session, there's, um, it's obviously lit from the left, you can tell that. And everyone can see that and say that, but most people can't say why, right? In reality, yeah. it's because the lightest part of the flower is closest to the sun, but no one says that. They all come up with these weird reasons for why it should be, it's not right. So I like to say, we all have that visual sense, but we don't understand what we're doing and intellectualizing it helps. That looks uh, cool. okay. Well, everybody, this was a delight. Great um, class. This was, it was so fun. Much fun. Thanks. It was yeah, great. Great work, Krista. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Sure, great work, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.